tonight on the Comic Book Girl 19 show. You think Thanos was right? Was Thanos right? We're upset! Comic Book Girl explores Thanos' mission with some controversial opinions. That's kind of rude. Uh, yes, I did see Ant-Man, too. Then, this episode takes a detour into unexpected territory. We're on track for an extinction event right now. <gasps> well, what are we supposed to do now? I don't sniff panties. No! Is this the end? Find out tonight on... <laughs> Today on the show, we're talking about Infinity War, the concept of balance, and how YouTube is a fuckboy. What? So how's everybody doing today? How's my fellas? Good. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Okay. Teacher! I got you these flowers because I just wanted to show my appreciation for all the things that you've taught me in the last two years that I've been a space brain visiting Earth studying humans. Oh my gosh, thank you, space brain. Wow, look at these roses. Uh, he got you flowers? Oh my gosh. Thank you, space brain. That's so nice. Nice. Isn't that nice of him? <laughs> yeah, it As is. If. It is nice. You realize that Space Brain is just calculating some kind of intricate plan so he can sleep with you. That's what this whole thing's about. He probably doesn't even like the show that much. Oh, no, I wasn't trying to do that. Well, I don't know, it could go either way. We have white and red roses. Red are for love. Generally, generally when you give a woman red roses, it's for passionate reasons. But the white, oh. you know, denotes like friendship and purity though. Oh, wow. uh, I don't know that much about human flowers, so I just picked something I thought would look nice with you. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, we don't buy it. Space Brain's up to something. That's, he's, look at him. Look at those peeper eyes. Me too. I'm calling it. Space Brain, me too. <laughs> wait, wait, did Space Brain make, uh, does Space Brain make you feel uncomfortable? No, he's making you feel uncomfortable. Oh. <laughs> I'm calling me too on Space Brain. Oh. You're yeah. outed. It's uh, you over. can't. Me Too what? doesn't work like that. No, I, uh, I'm so confused. I don't understand your planet's things. Look, you know what, honestly, Space Brain's been keeping it really cool. I mean, we all know he's got a crush. I mean, I've had crushes well, on my teachers. Oh, you just said it. You admitted it. I've Me had crushes too. on my teachers, but he's playing it cool, okay? As long as you keep it to yourself and you're not a creeper about it, it's fine. And, and, and buying a girl flowers is a nice thing. More boys should try it. Oh, well, thank you. See, I, that's all I wanted to do. Show you something nice. Sp well, Space Brain's a panty sniffer. That's all I'm saying. It's a panty sniffer. I don't sniff panties. Don't dignify it with a response. You're just feeding your troll. Speaking of trolls. Oh. We've got something to say today. Oh, no. The trolls are back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're back. Hi, guys. How's it going? We're upset. <laughs> Don't say. We got beef with you. We gotta tell you what's wrong. Oh well. Beef away. What's the beef? It's been two months, and where is your Marvel's Infinity War review? We've been waiting for it. We got angry troll comments just loaded, and haven't had a place to put them. This is ridiculous. Me too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> this is not how. <laughs> I don't think you guys. Yeah, understand. me too. Me too. No, no, none of y'all. None of y'all. Hashtag none of y'all. Robot was mean to me. Me too? No, that's not. You guys are really misunderstanding this. Quit trying to dig yourself out of this hole that you're in. Yeah, speaking of holes, what did you do to my wall? What is that? Yeah, well, we moved in weeks ago. Not that you would know because you haven't been up here to shoot a video in like forever. That's true. <laughs> I haven't been up here. Oh, the trolls have their own troll hole now. In your set? They chewed a hole right in the wall. Right in the wall. That's kind of rude. Well, it's YouTube. Trolls kind of come with the territory. That's right. We live here now. Permanently. Just so that we can troll you and your show all the time until we finally bring you down, which has always been our plan from the beginning. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Well, careful what you wish for. What is that supposed to mean? So let's talk about the Avengers movie. It was awesome. It was 
amazing, and it's why I'm gonna go see it again. I told my friend Chris that if they ever made an Avengers movie, I'd eat my goddamn hat. Well... <laughs> The taste of defeat. Ready? Let's go. Teacher. It is true, although you haven't said anything about Infinity War in the two months it's been out, the fans are wondering, did you like it? Well, Space Brain, and to all of you out there on the internet, uh, not only did I like Infinity War, I loved Infinity War. I thought it was fantastic. It raised the bar in filmmaking in much the same way that the Avengers film raised the bar. Because in the Avengers, you have all of these superheroes, and they've all been in their individual movies. And finally, they're coming together for the first time, working as a team, and it was awesome. And I remember, I remember thinking, there's no way they're gonna make this work when Avengers came out. I was like, there's no way they're gonna make this work. And then they totally made it work. And I was like, oh my God, they totally made it work. I knew it was gonna work the whole time. Well. <laughs> I knew. I didn't, and but I did know this time around, like I had confidence this time around, where I was like, oh yeah, Infinity War is gonna be amazing. This time you have all of these different teams that have all these very different flavors. Like the Guardians of the Galaxy, they're like the cosmic Marvel thing, like their tonality is different from what's been going on with like, say Captain America. You know, like they're much more grounded because they're on Earth. Uh, and then you also have Doctor Strange and his magic weird stuff going on. So it's like you have that, you have Tony Stark and his science stuff. And all of this came together for the first time there's so many great character interactions. And I feel like the thing that I'm really impressed by with this movie is that there's so many characters, and yet I felt like everybody had their moment to shine. Uh, everybody had awesome lines. I, it was just, it was fantastic how everybody got their, their little, their moment. Talk about Thanos now. Wow, Thanos was a fantastic villain. He lived up to the hype, in my opinion, because he was promised to us, again, six years ago at the very end of Avengers, and then now he's finally here, and man, it was, he was really great. <laughs> he was really good. He did a fantastic job. I think Josh Brolin was perfect. I love the way they made him kind of look like Brolin. His voice really brought a lot of power to the character. He believes that what he's doing is right. Uh, he believes he's performing a sacred duty that is in service of the universe. He's trying to find balance for the universe. And he even has sympathy for the people who are trying to defeat him. You know, he says to Tony Stark, you know, I hope they remember you. You know, I've heard of you. I mean, he gives him a compliment. So it's like what he's doing isn't personal. It's very impersonal. But um, that's what makes it so powerful and interesting to me. When I'm done, half of humanity will still exist. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Teacher, a lot of a lot of people online have been saying that they think that uh, Thanos could have just made more resources instead of eliminating half of the population. What do you think? Well, if you were paying attention, Thanos says, you know, perfectly balanced as all things should be. That is his core motivation: is helping both himself and the universe find balance. And if he were to create more resources to sustain all of the hungry mouths in the universe, that would throw the universe out of balance even further, because that's only going to create more mouths to feed at the end of the day, which when those resources are finally consumed, which they will be because no one's going to learn their lesson, uh, then there's going to be even more suffering than there would have been before. Oh. So you're saying, in Thanos' mind, it would have been more cruel to create more resources? Yes, it would absolutely be more cruel to create more resources because that's going to create more death eventually. So he's doing what he's doing out of love. I mean, it's a fucked up kind of love, but it's tough love. Well, then at what point do people on planets learn to live sustainably with the resources they have? Um, well, honestly though, his plan is kind of bunk in the fact that 
people learn through suffering and through mistakes. And so if he's preventing everyone from making that mistake, the mistake that his planet made and his species made, then he's robbing them of the ability to learn uh, from their mistakes so that they will find balance in the future. Oh my gosh. So then you think Thanos was right? Um, well, I'm just saying that in his messed up mind, what he's doing is right and it makes logical sense to him and I see why he thinks that. But at the same time, he's still not necessarily right to be doing what he's doing. Teacher, are you saying that people have a problem with consumption and don't know when to stop? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's life. I mean, that's, you know, that's what life is, is trying to consume more energy. Life is an act of consumption. So then when do people learn to live in balance with the resources they do have in a sustainable way? Well, generally, uh, people learn from their mistakes and they learn from pain and suffering. And so, you know, when you have one of these mass die-off events, that's when people are like, oh, yikes, maybe we should do it a little differently next time. Because, you know, a whole bunch of people I know died. You know, like. No, no, Bobo was right. Thanos could have just made more resources. No, no, Bobo was not right. Hashtag Bobo is right. No. No. Well, regardless, this has been a very interesting debate. Well, it is an interesting debate. And it's so interesting that it even got me thinking a lot about my own life and where I'm out of balance and what my resources look like and how we're, uh, we're on track for an extinction event right now. <gasps> Teacher, a lot of people have been talking about it for months. What do you think is going to happen in Avengers 4? You know, I don't know. And I don't care. I'm going to stay out of it. I'm just going to, like, let it happen. When it comes out, I'll be there. I'll watch it. I'll be surprised. No, I need to know what's going to happen now. Why would you want to spoil it for yourself? Why would you want to do that? I don't want to do that. I don't want to outsmart the movie so I don't have any fun when I watch it. <laughs> And I keep telling people, like, I'm like, hey, I saw Ant-Man. People are like, how is it? And then I'm like, it's totally good. And they're like, really? Really? You know, like, like people are like, put me to the question. Um, but look, if it sucked, I'll tell you. Okay, look at my Jurassic World review, all right? Like, I'll let you know if a fucking movie sucks. So this movie is fucking knocked my socks off. Well, well why is it so good, huh? Um, well, I- Look, I've seen Honey the Shrunk Eye Kids. <laughs> <laughs> What I like best about Infinity War is that it brings up the idea of balance. Balance? Yes, this is something that I have been thinking about a lot. I see a lot of imbalances, and one thing that's out of balance is the comic book All 19 show. <gasps> what? This show? Our show? My show? Yes. What are you talking about? Well, let me, let me, um, let me turn into Business Girl 19 for just a minute, okay? <laughs> this is business business. Numbers? Oh, oh boy, business kitty. Yeah, biz, I'm a business kitty. I've been forced to become a business kitty. I'm an artist who's, who's parading around as a entrepreneur. About a year and a half ago, we did a video called, Is This the End of the Comic Book Girl 19 Show? When we talked about the adpocalypse, when that was first starting. You know, there's just some alarms that go off in my brain that I'm like, ooh, this could lead to some stuff that isn't that awesome. I mean, it doesn't seem that bad, right? It's like, it's like, oh, it's just, it, it might not be that bad. It might affect a very small portion of the population, but it's just another indicator that, and they're just tightening the screws, you know, just a little bit, you know, tightening those. And it's been a while since then, and the, we're definitely feeling the effects. We're not being able to monetize videos um, because they're considered not safe for work. You got popped? Yeah, we've gotten popped a bunch of times. Several prominent YouTube creators are flipping out after it appears that several of their videos have been demonetized. KBHD, demonetized. Sam Sheffer, demonetized. Hydra Steam, demonetized. Casey Neistat. Why are these most likely completely family-friendly, advertiser-friendly videos being demonetized by an algorithm that has had months to learn? Do you get that? So they're afraid that we're gonna say something that'll upset their advertisers. Just don't swear. Make sure it's good money for the advertisers, no swearing. No, I can't say whether YouTube is over or not. I doubt that uh, 
because honestly, we just don't know how this is going to affect all of us yet. Why not have the video immediately reviewed by a human before demonetizing? YouTube should assume the burden on inaccuracies of their algorithm, not pass it on to their creators. For many big creators, their AdSense is their livelihood. It's how they pay their bills. Now to this, YouTube responded, we're always open to feedback and wish we could, but with 400 hours uploaded every minute, it's not humanly possible. I noticed that videos posted to the Humanist Report YouTube channel have been getting unusually low amounts of views. A lot of people keep telling us, hey, I'm subscribed, but I didn't know you were dropping videos. They don't tell me anymore. We don't notify all of your subscribers, right? We notify all of your subscribers who have rung the bell, and then your most active subscribers after that. Okay, so we try to notify um, the people who we believe would be most likely to tune in and watch your content. That's right. They've changed notifications. There's now three tiers of notifications. Now the notification bell has notify me sometimes. Whatever happened to ringing that bell, dude? Notifications sometimes? Isn't that what subscribing is? So it's an additional step that was rolled out recently that creators and viewers don't know anything about. If somebody smashes that bell, you better damn well show them my video. But no, not anymore. A bell smash isn't enough. A subscription isn't enough anymore. Why is YouTube obsessed with making it harder and harder for subscribers to get your content? Now, what makes this change especially moronic is that if top watchers of a channel will be the only ones notified, then that means if someone stops watching some of my videos for a while, they might just stop seeing our videos in their subscription box altogether, which incentivizes clickbait so creators do everything they can to get as many subscribers as possible to click every single one of their videos. It's just gonna turn YouTube into a shittier environment for videos. This change is potentially more harmful than the adpocalypse. We had no ads, but still had the views that drove support for us on Patreon and also the ability to attract in-video sponsorships. But now we risk slowly fading into obscurity while no one notices. So they're deranking us and they've changed the algorithms where they no longer reward shows like this for being popular and they reward shows that aren't popular. So it used to be before they did this, you would watch an MSNBC clip on YouTube or a CNN clip on YouTube. It would literally get four or 500 views because nobody goes to YouTube to watch fucking CNN. You're like, what? Nobody used to watch that stuff on YouTube. And now it seems like everyone's watching it while our numbers go down, independent producers numbers go down, those mainstream news media is being pushed by their algorithms and that was to get rid of us so they can push mainstream news because it's easier to advertise on mainstream news they're finally doing it you guys they're finally taking the sub feed it was the last thing we had the last sacred piece of youtube left that wasn't optimized and now being subscribed on the sub feed which was the one sacred place you could find the content you're subscribed to in chronological order is now being optimized. I'll tell you what optimized means. It means YouTube finally now has full control over what content you see. It means that people who are subscribed to you, notified to you, can actually not have access to your content if YouTube decides that it's not what they want you to see. Now YouTube can make your channel completely invisible even to your own subscribers. Oh. To be 100% honest, uh, we make this show at a loss. It has never paid for itself in six years. You're saying the show costs more to make than you bring in? Yeah, and, and when I, I started the show, I thought that maybe the ad revenue eventually would, would catch up and it would do its thing, but it never did. And so we've been stuck in this catch-22 scenario where you know we want to continue to make the show, but then we have to do all these outside projects to fund the show. But then doing those projects takes time away from making the show. And so it's, it's this thing, it's, it's a loss leader is what it's called. I've, I learned the term loss leader. What? No, I don't like where this is going. I don't either. <laughs> well, what are we supposed to do now? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Um, come follow me on Twitch, I guess. That's your answer? Yeah. Just pack up and move to Twitch? Mm-hmm. No! Look, YouTube is a fuck boy, <gasps> right? And that's fine. And I've always known that they don't owe me anything as a company. I still love this platform. I still use it every day. <laughs> Look, we've been dancing on the knife edge this entire time and every little bit has counted. You know?
now. Every little bit from the teeny amount of ad revenue that we do receive to the support on Patreon that we have to all the other projects we do. Uh, I mean, they, they, every, every cent counts uh, and it's kept us afloat this far, but with all of these changes that keep happening and how uh, these platforms just get tighter and tighter and make it harder and harder for people to even see my content, uh, I finally hit the point of diminishing returns where I can't keep putting money into this because I'm not getting what I need back from it. And I, I've, I'm burned out. I'm burned out trying to figure out how to make it work. Um, I surrender and uh, I'm, I'm leaving the comic book girl 19 show behind. I have to, uh, to survive. And it's really sad and I don't want to do it, but I, uh, I've just hit, I've hit the, I've just hit a wall. Oh my gosh, the, the, there's gotta be a way we could do something to save the show. Wait, what if I, what if I start a lemonade stand to raise money to save the show? <laughs> I just don't think that it's gonna bring in enough. There's gotta be a way. Look, I really appreciate you guys trying. But what about all the hilarious plot lines we've got coming up? I'm just about to go through robot puberty. You don't wanna miss that. What about the episode where I get space brain deported? We've got all these fun, wacky adventures to go on. Well, I've got a Dune quote for that. No, no more Dune quotes. Arrakis teaches the attitude of the knife, chopping off what's incomplete, and saying, now it's complete because it ended here. What if we just cut the budget and get rid of Space Brain? <sighs> it's been a real honor. It's been a real honor to be here with you guys and be in your lives. And I'm hoping that, you know, some of you will, will come with me to Twitch and support me on there. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to you know, have all this, you know, all this beautiful editing and graphics and space brains and robots. Um, it'll just be me by myself. <sighs> Hanging out. Are you sure you want to do this? It's not about what I want to do. It's about what I have to do to survive. And I'm really sad about all this. And it's really hard to let this go because it's like something that we've built for six years. And uh, it's not an easy decision. What if YouTube changes again and it gets better? It's not. Nope, it's not happening. It's not getting better. I'm comic book girl 19, no more. Comfort girl, what just happened? Well, I just found out that YouTube has um, rolled out a bunch of changes today at VidCon, announced a lot of new things. Like what? Well, they're going to introduce channel memberships um, where people can pay four ninety nine dollars a month to support your channel and then they get like emojis and badges and stuff like on Twitch. Um, they're going to make it easier for you to merchandise where you can just have things plugged in to where you can just, people can buy your shit right underneath your videos and Teespring and other crap will be, you know, plugged in and, uh, they're offering premieres now where you could premiere your episodes and, um, you know, offering these cool changes. Isn't that what we always needed? Yeah, but it's just kind of like, it's like when you're out the door, you have your bags packed and then the guy's like, oh, here's the thing you always wanted, you know? And you're like, what? Like, you gonna do this now? After I'm already tapped out? So, whatever. I'm an idiot. Weird that we were just talking about all this. It's like they're combining like all the things from Twitch and Patreon that I needed. Hello, everyone.
everybody. Thank you for coming. I have called this press conference today to discuss the recent YouTube announcements and how that affects my decision to end the Comic Book Girl 19 show. Yes. Comic Book Girl, Comic Book Girl, over here. Uh, is it true? Are you really planning on ending your show? Well, I was. Uh, I was literally filming the final episode of my show when all of these announcements were when all of these announcements were brought forth. Uh, it has changed my thinking on everything that's going on. We may have a way to continue with the show. I feel like the universe is telling me that I need to keep going and not give up quite yet. So when these memberships become available to us in the next several weeks, we will roll them out and hopefully we will have enough support from you out there to continue with the show. I feel a lot like Abraham when God told him to kill his son Isaac on the mountain and then said, JK, never mind. Uh, <laughs> second, this channel is still in limbo. It may or may not come back. It depends on channel memberships and how strong that is. And also, I would like to thank my patrons on Patreon. For the last couple of years, you guys have been amazing. Your support has kept this show going. Uh, without you, we would have thrown in the towel a long time ago. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Uh, Comfico, Comfico. Uh, did you see Ant-Man and the Wasp? And what did you think? Uh, yes, I did see Ant-Man, too. Ant-Man and the Wasp. And uh, I thought it was just okay, to be honest. The ending credit scene fucked me up, though. Yeah. <laughs> would you still recommend it? Uh, you know, I would recommend it, but don't. it's not as good as the first one. But if you like miniature shit, then you're gonna love it. Yes. Uh, does this decision to possibly end your channel or continue it, will this affect Dune Club 2 coming up in July? Um, well, until we have channel memberships available, we will not be putting out any more episodes. Uh, I am giving the show to Robot. If he would like to have his own episodes, he is more than welcome. For now, until channel memberships are available, I will be exclusively on Twitch doing my Dune Club. We are going to we are going to be reading Dune Messiah together starting on Sunday, the 15th at 3.30 p.m. I can't wait to see you there. Come get sad with me on a desert planet. I'd like to thank everybody for coming and stay tuned for updates in the future about channel memberships. Hope to see you all back soon. Thank you.